Okay, so welcome back. And today we're going to be creating a tile tag that is similar to the licorice locks that are in Candy Crush, where um, if a piece falls into it, you cannot switch that with other pieces. But if that piece becomes a match, then the locks become destroyed and it works as normal. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to import some art that I made. Um, it's really, really simple art. It is just this X looking tile that's going to go on top of everything. So I'm just going to pull this into my art folder, which is getting a little unorganized, but that's fine. Um, I made this at 128 by 128 instead of 512 by 512 like the other pieces. So I'm going to put the pixels per unit right at 128 because I want this to take up an entire space. And I'll apply that. Uh, now, what I'm going to be using as my kind of example piece for this, or my template piece for this, is um, the breakable tile. So I'm going to find that in my prefabs here, which is in my piece prefabs. And I'm just going to drag it into the scene. So there's my good old breakable tile. Now, before I go any further, I want this to not affect the breakable tile prefab. So I'm going to go to game object and choose break prefab instance. I'm going to change this from saying breakable tile to saying lock tile. And then I'm going to change the art. So here where I have this little squircle, I'm going to replace that with the box image. There we go. Um, I'm going to leave the hit points to one, but I'm going to change the sorting layer from default to markers. And I'm going to put its order in layer relatively high, let's say eight, so that it appears above every other marker. Now I'm going to go back to my prefabs and pull this in. So I've made this into a prefab. That's all that we have to do as far as the piece itself goes. Now let's open up our board script. Okay, so in the board script, the first thing we have to do is update the different kinds of tiles that we can have. Right now we have it so that we have breakable, blank, and normal. So I'm going to add a few more to this. I'm going to add a lock tile. I'm going to add a concrete tile, which is going to act similar to the icing. And I'm going to add a slime tile, which is going to act similar to the chocolate. So I've got all these new, new kinds of tiles here. Now the next thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to make uh, prefabs for those. So I'm just doing the licorice today. So I'm going to do a public game object. I'm going to call this lock tile prefab. Um, yep, and I'm also going to need to make a an array of the lock tiles. So this is going to be a private background tile, and I'm going to call this lock tiles. Okay, so now. A lot of the work that we have to do for this, we've already done in other methods. So for example, we have our generate blank spaces and our generate breakable tiles. For our lock tiles, it's going to be really, really similar to that. So I'm just going to create a new method. I'm going to make this just, uh, doesn't need to be public, uh, private void generate lock tiles. It doesn't take any arguments. And honestly, I can just take this chunk of code and paste it directly into generate lock tiles. So I'm going to do the same for loop. And if the tile is a lock tile, so if it's tile kind dot lock, then I'm going to create a lock tile at that position. So temp position stays the same, but instead of being a breakable tile prefab, it's going to be a lock tile prefab. Oop, no, not what I meant to do. There we go. And instead of putting it into the breakable tiles array, I'm going to put it into the lock tiles array. Um, oh yeah, I do need to make this array public. So where I made my lock tiles array, I'm going to make that public because I need to access it from the, uh, the dot script. Cool. All right, so I'm going to save this. I'm going to pop back into Unity here. 
right now my game thinks that level 2 is the current level. So I'm going to go to my scriptable objects. As soon as I wait for everything to catch up, I'm going to go to level 2. I'm going to change these from being breakable tiles to being lock tiles. So they're all lock tiles. Um, I'm going to go back to my board. It needs to know what the lock tile prefab is, so I'll pull that in. Um, okay, and then before I run, I need to make sure that that generate lock tiles is called from the setup method. So, generate lock tiles. Now, lock tiles are filled just like a normal tile is, so I don't need to add any, uh, any other um, conditions to my if, sta if statement here, like I did with the blank spaces. I will have to add conditions for the concrete and the slime tiles, though, the ones that are like icing and chocolate. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to pop back into Unity here. And when I hit play, and go into the game itself, I should see those four licorice tiles, or lock tiles, if I did my work correctly. Oh, nope. Oh, okay, that's what I did. So I created the array for the lock tiles, but I forgot to initialize it. So in my board class again, in my start method, um, we'll do this right under where I made my breakable tiles. I'm going to say lock tiles is equal to a new background tile size, oops, width height by height. Okay, so we'll save that. Um, let's pop back into Unity here and hit play once it's done compiling. And it should know now what the, yeah, there we go. Say okay to that, and there we go. We got our lock tiles. However, they don't function like they should because I can still move stuff around and they're not being destroyed when um, pieces are matched underneath them. So let's fix that. Now, the next script we need to look at is the dot script. Now, the dot script already has the ability to access the move script. So, all I really have to do is add a check in here to only allow it to swap with something else if um, the licorice tile is blank at both the current dot, or yeah, this dot and the other dot. So, I'm going to say uh, if board.lock tiles column row is equal to null and board.lock tiles. And I'm going to do column, uh, yeah, column plus integer casted direction.x. So wherever the other tile is, row plus integer casted, direction.y is equal to null. So I'm only going to allow them to be moved if both um, the current tile and, or the current dot and the dot that we're trying to switch it with, if they're both um, lock tiles, or if they're both not lock tiles. And do, do, do. I'll just put this else statement, copy it instead of cut it, and put it right there. All right, so save your script, pop back into Unity, and let's try this out. Okay, so there are our lock tiles. And if I try to swap with them, I can't. Now, that's most of the functionality done. However, we want to make sure that when we have a match in it, that the lock tile goes away. So let's do that now. I'm back in our board script. OK, so we already have a method that destroys those, or at least gives damage to those breakable tiles. And that's here in the board method. So. All we have to do is create one very similar to that to give damage to these licorice tiles. Um, it's right down here somewhere. Destroy matches, decrease row. Oh, okay, it's not a method. It's inside the destroy matches app. We have uh, check to see if breakable tiles isn't null. So what we can do uh, is we can also just kind of 
copy and paste this conditional block right afterwards and change this from breakable tiles to lock tiles and oops, lock tiles and lock tiles down here and lock tiles here and lock tiles here so that now gosh, I should have chose a different name um, now we're checking to see if we need to break a breakable tile or a lock tile so let's save that let's go back into unity here uh, hit play and we should be able to break those licorice tiles Okay, so with all that in place, let's test this out. Um, if I make a match, licorice tile goes away, and I'm able to swap pieces into it. Now, let me just play to make sure that this is going to work for all of the pieces. Okay, and the last one. Alright, cool. So. I'm able to swap all of these in and out now that they're gone. And yeah, uh, if you wanted to, you could add this as part of your um, your end level requirements, just like you can the breakable tiles, the exact same way. And yeah, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Uh, otherwise, you can send me a message on Twitter, or you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join the Discord. Um, uh, go ahead and hit like if you learned something new, and have yourself a wonderful day.